Hello and welcome to another Book Talk with Tracy. I have to say I really enjoy doing these interviews with contributors to an anthology called Creativity and Chaos. Uh, a lot of them are my friends. Um, I've been part of the Inscribe organization for a number of years and it was published by Inscribe Press. So I just enjoyed them so much. I've got a couple more that I want to share with you. And so let's just get right to it. Uh, this next one is an interview with Nina Faye Mori. Enjoy. Hi, I'm so pleased to be here again uh, with another interview from one of the contributors to a new anthology published by Inscribe Press called Creativity and Chaos, Artistic Endeavors for Trying Times. Super excited. Uh, the anthology will be uh, coming out in September. And today I have one of the contributors, Nina Mori. Hi, Nina. So you're actually uh, involved in, um, you're part of the, the publishing team, I guess you could say. You're one of the editors and, and things. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, the managing editor, but I had a good team with me. So yeah, I think it was like eight or nine people. So that was good. <laughs> Yes, but it's been, it's a lot of work, of course, whenever one puts together any kind of anthology. Yes, yes, it was a lot of work. I hadn't done something like that before. So I put a magazine together because I used to edit a fellow script or our Inscribe magazine. But it's the first time actually putting a book together. So uh, it was a, quite a learning curve for me, but uh, that's one of the reasons I wanted to do it. So. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, and, I, and I'm and i sure you've done a great job. Of course, I haven't seen the, you know, the paperback finished copy in my hands yet. <laughs> I have it right here. <laughs> oh, how exciting. Well, this is the first time we've actually seen a copy of it on one of these interviews. So that's mm -hmm. really cool. I have to say, I love the cover. It's so vibrant. Um, it's It's one of the things that people have commented on how nice the cover is. Oh, that's good. Yeah, we had lots of choices to choose from, but that was the consensus uh, we arrived at. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. <laughs> oh, as you should be, because I do know that there's so much work that goes on behind the scenes for sure. Mm -hmm. So um, let's talk a little bit today about you, uh, about the pieces that you actually have in the anthology. Um, you have, actually have three pieces. You've got two nonfiction and a poem. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, well, let's start with the nonfiction. So um, one of them is called Cancer, Chaos, and Creativity. And then the other one is called After Grief, uh, Recreating Life from the Ashes. I mean, both of them, just from the titles, sound like two very traumatic events that took place in your life, which then, of course, you uh, were inspired to write, write these mm -hmm. pieces. So go ahead and tell us a little bit about either or both. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, cancer, chaos, and creativity. Uh, I was uh, diagnosed with breast cancer back in, well, actually, probably the end of 2010, beginning of 2011. Uh, and uh, I, I went through a lot of, I went through about a year of treatment. It was like surgery and the chemotherapy and the radiation. And, and so that was was quite an ordeal, um, but uh, I've survived this long, touch wood, so I think I'm in the clear now, but uh, you never know with cancer. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I remember those days. I think it was when we first met, actually, face-to-face, -face, was at a, a conference in maybe 2011 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think I, you were just going through that whole process at that time. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, it's it's a grueling process, and uh, since I've joined Inscribe, I found so many of the of my fellow writers have also gone through some form of cancer. A lot of them breast cancer, but lots of forms of cancer. So uh, it's very prevalent. It seems like in society today. So I'm mm -hmm. I'm by far not the only one. So it was nice to you know communicate with other people who had that experience as well. Yeah, yeah. And and so in terms, as you say, like, it's very, very common, unfortunately, so. Um, but what about the creativity piece? Because I'm so glad that you are a cancer survivor, <laughs> you know, one another. And of course, that's such a chaotic time emotionally and physically. But, you know, the create, what about the creativity part of that? Journey. Yes. Uh, well, when I was first diagnosed, I kind of dropped everything and I wasn't really doing too much. 
But then eventually I found out that that was kind of an outlet for me for some of my emotions and I was feeling. Um, so I went back, I started doing some journaling, which I hadn't done for years. So I picked that up again and doing some Bible study along with some journaling and, and scriptures that were speaking to me at the time. And uh, I wrote a few pieces about it in my journal, like just catching out pieces. And I kind of took a lot of that and put it into uh, my story, Cancer, Chaos and Creativity. Um, and I talked about how that whole process uh, came about because I think a lot of the times I find not just myself, but a lot of the writers I talk to, there's a lot of uh, people who kind of use that for therapy when they're going through some crisis or chaotic uh, experiences in their lives. And that's kind of where the idea for the uh, creativity and chaos come in and also coming out of the pandemic as well. Hmm. And then I had lost my husband just in uh, April 30th of 2020, just when the pandemic was starting. So that's kind of what led me into the story about after grief. Mm -hmm. uh, recreating life from the ashes and I talked in that one about uh, the whole experience like just the realization that kind of hit me when I left the emergency room that night that after about 50 years with this man I was all by myself now of course I have my children but you know it's not like having a partner in your life and, and how to kind of eventually came to thinking about how am I going to live now what kind of a life is ahead of me how do I kind of pick up the pieces and put it back together when half of them are missing mm -hmm. and uh, that's kind of what that story came out of well I and I have to say like what a challenging time to go through that I mean obviously losing your you know any loved one but certainly your your life's partner would be I think the ultimate you know challenge but right then during uh, COVID as well, like how, how yeah. did you hope because you weren't really able to get maybe this, the support that you might normally have had. Yeah, it was kind of an isolating time for a lot of people. And then, you know, most people would have their partners or somebody. So it wasn't quite so isolating, but when you don't have somebody, I, I still have my son that's in the same city with me. So I saw him a lot and my daughter would come and visit, but uh, you know, it's just, not the same as having somebody every day when you wake up or go to go to bed with or it's it's um it kind of uh emphasized the the isolation i guess of of that whole period yeah wow and i mean in both cases um you know the writing i guess writing about it is as you said kind of therapeutic i find that as i've been talking to various authors you know in this process that so often that's the case you know they've used their their create creative gifts um or mm -hmm. writing specifically to sort of um be able to move forward from from some of these difficult uh times mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's why i you know, just talking to some of the other members and stuff, that's kind of where the genesis of the idea for the anthology came about, because I knew that there were lots of writers in our organization that had gone through a lot of traumatic, whether it be cancer or uh, other means of, of death or illness or what have you, that uh, had been dealing with a lot of things. And I know from just talking to them or from reading their previous writing that, uh, it came in, it played a part in the writing. So yeah, that's mm -hmm. kind of part of uh, part of the reason what uh, we thought of this uh, anthology. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's brilliant. I mean, as you say, you know, it, so a lot of times our best work comes out of, well, we're, we're, we're sharing the, those things and other people are able to relate and maybe find hope mm -hmm. um, and healing through mm -hmm. hearing about other people's experiences. Like right. This. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so you also have a poem um I'm always impressed by poets because I don't really write poetry so it's like oh poetry <laughs> oh, lovely yeah but kind of the first thing I started out doing when I was writing the first thing I wrote was poetry mm. uh, and and short stories to some extent but I kind of started out with poetry <laughs> yeah well I mean poetry is such a deep emotional um art form I guess if you will or I think it is you know um so tell us about that it's called a desert apathia did I get that right? mm -hmm. 
Yes, apathia, apathia. <laughs> yes, um, I've kind of always been fascinating by the monastic life. Uh, and I have read some, a number of pieces about the desert fathers who I think primarily lived in the Egyptian desert about uh, third century AD, I believe. Um, and there were desert monks, there was also some nuns. And uh, so that gave rise to desert monasticism. And that kind of had a lot of influence on the Christian monasticism, I think came out of that hermit lifestyle that they lived. Um, where they kind of focused on uh, sacrifice and stillness and, and silence and prayer. And uh, they emphasized living and practicing uh, the teachings of Jesus. Uh, they did a lot of uh, immersing themselves in the scriptures um, for spiritual growth and, and sanctification. So um, there's one quote I had from one of the Desert Fathers that kind of... Uh, led into the poem, it's, uh, I don't know which desert father it was, I think it was kind of anonymous, but it's, take care to be silent, empty your mind, attend to your meditation in the fear of God, whether you're resting or at work. If you do this, you will not fear the attacks of the demons. And kind of, that kind of led me into writing that poem, A Desert Apathia, mm -hmm. which apathia means uh, freedom from your passions and emotions. Mm -hmm. Well, wow. I guess that's where we get the word apathy, but mm -hmm. I, I feel like apathy is a much more positive, <laughs> uh, has a more positive connotation to it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so like that, okay, well, that's really cool. And how do you, how does that relate to the anthology, that whole idea of the creativity and chaos aspect? Um, yeah, I, it, it talked about them, like they were trying to get away from a lot of persecution at the time that was going on. And uh, they kind of did a lot of isolation there, a lot of Bible study, uh, writing, that sort of thing. So it kind of really related to, I thought, what the topic of the anthology was. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> so you had mentioned at the top of the interview um, that you, you know, you have done other editorial work and that's, that is very true. You were ed editor in chief of fellow script magazine for, for a number of years and you're still on the editorial staff. Um, yes. I yes. started out as columns editor. Then I went to editor in chief and now I've been back at uh, doing columns editor for the last couple of years. <laughs> yeah. So you have a lot of experience in, in that regard in terms of editing and, and yeah. Uh, and that kind of thing. So that's kind of cool. Um, what other like writing do you do? Or, you know, how? Well, I've had quite a bit of uh, my short stories and just uh, essays and poetry and stuff published over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, I probably didn't really start seriously doing that till I was in my early fifties. So <laughs> it, uh, it's kind of a thing after I retired, which, and then I went back to work for a little while. So I didn't do too much for a few years there. But uh, yeah, it's uh, something that I kind of picked up because I always enjoyed writing when I was younger. But when you're raising a family and whatnot, you don't have that much time to do it. So like I said, I, I first got back in by writing poetry. And I wrote a bit, some poetry and I had some of it published uh, in magazines or literary journals. And then just gradually kind of snowballed from there. And I did a lot of, uh, for different magazines, like uh, Grey News, uh, Prairie Messenger, the Canadian Messenger, uh, and just kind of had a, I did quite a few uh, for a few years there. I haven't done too much recently, except for Fellow Script yeah. and, and the anthologies. I've had uh, work uh, published in, uh, four, I believe, of the other anthologies, um, Easter stories and more, Christmas stories and more, um, Seven Essential Habits of Christian Writers. So, yeah. <laughs> Your CV is pretty long. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I applied for the Barnabas Award, you had to put in a, a CV and it was kind of enlightening. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> I'd done more than I thought I had. Yeah. When you start 
typing it all down in on a piece of paper that's for sure absolutely absolutely and uh yeah so speaking of that you have won uh some awards in that regard hey the bar the barnabas award being one yeah i joined um inscribe in 2014 so in 2015 i had to uh, submit an application for it and not really expecting to win but i thought oh, well might as well try it'll be a good experience you don't win if you don't try so yeah. <laughs> I also submitted some pieces uh, that I had written that year. I think it was a uh, personal essay category, I believe it was, or nonfiction. And I won a couple of awards for that too at the same time. So it was quite a good year. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, wow. Well, that, congratulations, of course. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And you're you're very busy also. Um, you are on the executive, the Inscribe executive currently. Uh, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm director at large on there. So that's how I ended up kind of picking up the anthology because I had talked about actually, I think the year before when they were doing, I believe it was Easter stories and more, I had volunteered to kind of uh, co-chair or whatever you want to call that with Ruth Snyder, but that's when my husband uh, got ill. So then I kind of dropped out of everything. So for a a little while there yeah yeah so I thought well okay now's my chance to try it again so <laughs> and it and it's keeping you out of trouble <laughs> yes yes very much so it's a lot yeah. of work probably more than I really expected but uh like I said I had lots of help so oh that's yeah exactly exactly um yeah well is so anything else you want to talk about today I'm I'm just about out of questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to say that there is, we've got a lot of talented writers in Inscribe, and I had many, many submissions. I actually extended the submission deadline. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't for lack of submissions, but I, there's a few, like I, you have to just, like, kind of pick and choose. So I extended the deadline for a bit, but uh, there was some that I wish I could have included but because I, I had a page limit, obviously, so I couldn't actually publish them all. Yeah. But uh, there were so many that I could have published, especially poems. I got a lot of poetry. I was surprised. I didn't realize we had so many poetry writers. <laughs> yes, yes. And and just as a little side note for anyone who's who's wondering, I mean, there was a selection committee, and all of the selections were um, were submissions. Sorry, were anonymous. So it's not like Nina was like yeah, I'm going to get all mine in there. <laughs> it was an anonymous process yeah. and a committee yeah. uh, decision. So yeah. the committee didn't get to see who the submiss submitters were. <laughs> oh, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a cool thing about it, you know, that um, we encourage, you know, people to submit, but it is really quite fair in that, in that regard. Cause right. You know, yeah just like all our contests and everything it's it's very done very fairly yes, yes. no favoritism <laughs> exactly exactly well this has been lovely i look forward to seeing you hopefully again soon um at fall conference coming up at the yes i think we'll see each other at the fall conference this year that's in calgary i'm looking forward to it it's our 24th anniversary of inscribe so we're going to have a little special gala and everything and it's uh, the book launch for our anthology so i think it'll be a fantastic time <laughs> yes yes the 25th anniversary yes that's right uh, 25th yeah um, sorry yeah probably misspoke <laughs> <laughs> oh that's okay. okay but yeah of, of being inscribed but you know the their the roots go back even farther than that which is kind of cool so yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah almost twice as long I think <laughs> yeah so I'm really yeah. looking forward to that too well it was so nice to talk to you Nina and uh yeah god bless we'll we'll speak again I'm sure okay well thank you very much for the interview Tracy and I've had a chance to watch a few of the others and uh really good <laughs> I really enjoyed them oh good